Microsoft just released Office 2021, and here are a bunch of new features that you're able to get your hands on. Uh, 2021 is a version that you can buy, just pay a one-time fixed fee. The alternative is buying Office 365, which gives you access to features that update every month. But this, this time we're just going to talk about Office 2021. So my name is David and I'm and I do tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI. If you're using tech in the office, then I'm covering it in this channel. So here off the bat are some of the new features that are released, but we're going to go through most of them one by one and show you how they work in practice. Here you have a visual refresh, so you can see you've got these kind of rounded outline things and, and new shadows. So this matches the look of Windows 11. There's also an enhanced search up here in all of them. So I can say, for example, visual, and then I can get different files, definitions, some help, and other things that I can do, other actions I can do. So it is a much more enhanced thing than it used to be. And there are some performance updates across the board, including in Excel when you have some if account if formulas. The quick access toolbar, this is something that's changed. So it used to be that the default was above the ribbon like this. And here, a lot of people don't know, but you can actually add whatever you want here by right clicking it and add to quick access toolbar. I love this. I find it's really, really useful to get the stuff that you use all the time up here so you can access them regardless of which tab you're on. But with the new one, by default, it's hidden. You can right click here and choose show quick access toolbar. I tend to show it below the ribbon, but the other thing that you can do now is you can also show the labels for each one. So if you forget what the icons mean, then you can show the labels. So here we are in Excel. And as you can see, there is someone else editing it. That's also me. So you're able to co-author with Office 2021, and that applies to Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. Um, you also get other new features like the ability to comment. So you've always had comments in Excel, but in 2021, it's a lot better. For example, you can add a new comment like this, and then people can reply and you can do all sorts of things like you can edit back comments, you can delete or resolve the thread as well. And you also have a view of all your comments. So if I keep adding a new one here, then you can click on here as well. And in fact, it's, it's such a great feature that Microsoft decided to rename the old feature that used to be comments to notes. So notes you've always had, and you know, it kind of looks like this. And the issue with notes is that there's no way to see them all at once. And all you see is this kind of thing that pops up and they never disappear. You can't resolve them or anything else like that. I do have autosave turned on. So there's another new feature. You can turn on autosave when you are saving to the cloud. So if you go to review, you get workbook statistics. And this will tell you this clean thing of how big the sheet is, how many tables, pivot tables, formulas, charts there are both in the current sheet and in the workbook. So it's just a very quick overview of what's going on here. And it can also tell you where the end of the sheet is and the number of cells with data. When you are co-authoring, you might want to have different views as well. So in the view tab, you have sheet views here. You can filter it, but then that will affect other people's views as well. However, if you go to new sheet view, it puts these in black. So that's an indicator of what you're doing. And then if you filter it, it will only be you. I do have another video where I talk about this as in more detail. You can also keep them and switch them and rename them, etc. So here I have some data on concert sales and let's look at some of the new functions. Now, dynamic arrays is absolutely brilliant. You used to need to go equals this plus this if you wanna get a total and then drag it down for the whole column. With dynamic arrays, you can now do this equals the whole column plus the whole column. And your answer will be returned in this kind of blue box like that. If you have some text in here, it will give you an error because it's trying to spill over this text. But once you remove it, it comes back. And with this brand new feature that means Excel rebuilt the formula engine from the ground up came six new functions as well. So some of the new functions are, for example, equals unique. So equals unique, and I want to get of the country column, and I can do the unique value there. Or I can do equals sort, and then let's do unique again. <laughs> so you can wrap them inside each other, and this will sort it from A to Z. Both of those functions do more complex stuff, 
but that's usually what I use them for. Equals filter is another great one. So you can say, give me all of these three columns where this column is equal to Spain. Close your brackets. And then it gives you all of those where that's equal to Spain. Now, if I was to start here at A, we would see it would say A, which is Spain. Annoyingly, it doesn't bring you your column headers, so you need to copy and paste them manually, which is a bit of a shame. And these are dynamic, which means they grow as the data changes. So if I add in a new country here, like France, that will be added here and here for in alphabetical order. So that's really, really good. Um, other things that you can do with this are you also have equals sequence. So you can say, I want three rows and four columns, and then it will just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until 12. You also have equals round array. And then here I can say similar kind of thing, four rows, six columns, minimum is going to be 10 and maximum is going to be 300. And then I'm going to say it has to be an integer. So true, close my brackets, and then I get this. As I enter a new thing, they do regenerate new random numbers. And the last thing that got introduced is sort by. Now sort by is kind of the same as sort, but just does more advanced types of sorting. So I won't go through that here. But with dynamic arrays, you get a whole load of new functionality and even old functions that were pretty hard to use before, like transpose, which flips the data from rows into columns. Now it can flip it like that. So instead of two columns, it's now two rows, etc. It's always got the blue outline like that. If you ever want to refer to a dynamic array in a formula, so I can say equals count a, count how many cells there are, and I can click on this. And if I select it, it does C25 hash, which means the dynamic array that starts with C25. So it is dynamic, so it can change as we saw here, but with hash, it will always start and end at that place. So other functions that got introduced are XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is brilliant. So with VLOOKUP, you get a lot of issues. Here, for example, if I can't find this new one, France, I'm going to get an error, which, I mean, it's not wrong because it can't find it in that thing. But XLOOKUP solves a lot of the issues that VLOOKUP has. I have a longer video on XLOOKUP, but for now, let me just go through with it. Equals XLOOKUP, and then you start with your lookup value. So I'm going to start with this one, and comma, and then my lookup array is going to be this one. Press F4 to lock it in. My return array is going to be that one. Press F4 to lock that in. And that's what makes it great. It doesn't need to have a table array like VLOOKUP. So your columns can be on either side. If I was looking up here and looking right to left, that would still work. If someone inserts a new column here, it would still work. It's a lot more robust. And you also have if not found. So this is an optional input, the last three are. So if not found, I'm going to put um, the words check. And then I can do the other two. You don't have to end with false as your false as your last input because it automatically does an exact match like that. If you want, you can change it for an exact match, but it will just work. And here it gives me the term check. So as XLOOKUP, I do have a video that compares XLOOKUP and VLOOKUP if you want more detail. The last new function is let. So I can say equals let. And then here you can give a part function a name and then refer to that without having to refer to it again. So I can say a name is going to be add. And then I'm going to say the name value is going to be this cell. And then my calculation is just going to be add plus six. So right now it's six, but if I put in seven there, it's 13, et cetera, et cetera. So this can be quite useful if you have a bit of a function that you repeat a lot and you copy and paste a bit in the function, you sort of need to try if something errors out, and if it doesn't error out, then you do that thing, then let's is quite useful. So how I'm in PowerPoint, and let's look at some of the PowerPoint ones. So stock images, this is actually available in Excel, Word, and Outlook as well, but it's most prominent in PowerPoint, so that's why we'll cover it here. So you get 
thousands upon thousands of stock images that Microsoft gives you. Now they add new ones every month and some of these are only available for premium customers that pay for Office 365, but they're really high quality, beautiful images. And the good thing about a lot of them is that they have a lot of sort of white space, empty space, which is great for using as a full slide background where you can write some text neatly there. You also have icons. These did come out in 2019, but you do have more now than you used to. And then you, these things are new. So cut out people. These are kind of models that PowerPoint has hired for doing certain things. And they do lots of different poses in that thing. Stickers, this is similar to cut out people, but more for the sort of telegram generation. Videos, very cool stock videos that will loop until finished. They're only available in PowerPoint, these ones actually. They have no sound. They play automatically and they loop until finished. And then illustrations. So these are the illustrations and you can actually recolor them. So you choose the prominent color and you recolor that, which looks quite good actually. But they are a bit limited in what they can offer. These are the really high definition stock images. And this is the stock video. If I shift F5 to go to power slideshow mode, you can see the video plays with no sound automatically. It goes from start to finish and then it loops at the end of it like that. So those are really, really cool. I really like them. Other things that you have are image transparency now. So in picture format, you can go to transparency and you can choose that you can see through this image. You used to have to do this through a really annoying hack to put it in a shape first, but now you can do it directly like that. Uh, in all of the Office apps, you have an accessibility checker. So in the review tab, or sometimes down here as well, you can check accessibility, and then it opens up this of things that are that, that you should be aware of. So hard to read contrast, this is quite good. In fact, you should avoid that anyway. The other thing in here is, in check accessibility, is the reading order pane. Now, here when you use a screen reader, then you can tell PowerPoint which order to read your things in. So this should be first, or this should be first, you should always have a slide title and generally that should be first, but you can also untick something if it doesn't get read in that. So you also have the ability to right click on a slide and choose a link to the slide. And if it's saved on the cloud, then you can send someone a link just to that slide, which is quite nice. You could always do kind of an ink, ink for a while in the draw tab. Personally, I don't really use this very much because I don't use a tablet. But now you can do an ink replay to see how it was done as a video. That's available in Word and Excel as well. So let's say I have a shape with this text in here. You might want to change certain things in the shape. So what you can do is you can go to shape outline or anywhere where you can edit a color. And then if you go to more colors, you now have a hex code. It makes it more compatible with other apps that allow you to do that. And also over here, when you're in outline, you now have sketched. So you can do one of these kind of sketch formations. And this is useful for kind of manuals. Um, I find it just makes it like someone drew it rather than a full on shape. So you can then change the fill color, for example, like that. But sometimes it can look a little bit funny if you have it with a filled shape. Sometimes they have some gaps like that. That's what I've noticed. On to uh, just a couple of things to point out that are not available on other apps. So you have a proper dark mode. So if you go to file and then you go to account, you can choose black. And then it gives you a proper dark mode where it switches the color of the text and puts it white on black instead of black on white. So I'm going to go back to colorful, which is usually what I use. And that is an option there. And the other one, if you go to view, you have the immersive reader and that has been around for a while, but now you can do other things like you can go to line focus. This is new and you can move things up and down. It also has a more natural sounding language. If you do read aloud here than it used to, um, you can do other things as well. You can change the page color to make it kind of easier to focus on. You can, do things with the syllables to split them out. You can have different kind of line focus numbers like that as well. So that is a useful thing for people that are kind of learning to read. 
So in Outlook, you have some enhanced translation stuff. So if you get an email in your native language is French, then what you can do is you can either select part of text and translate just that bit, or you can translate entire message. If you get this translate message to French, you can double click on it and either click on that, or you can click on here as well. There you go, it's translated the whole thing to French quite quickly. You can click here and choose translation preferences, and then down here you can say, well, always translate, never translate, what language to translate into, you can add a language, etc. So that's the translation stuff. The other thing that's new is that if you get multiple attachments in a file, you can click on attachments and save all attachments instead of going one by one and saving attachments, which is what you used to need to do. And it also has other features that we've seen in other apps like stock images and accessibility checkers. Couple of new features in Outlook. So here on the right, I have a meeting invite. Now what's new is enhanced tracking tools. So here I can go to tracking and I can see that I invited myself. Uh, this person has now accepted it rather than uh, the meeting organizer has no response because that's me. Um, the other new thing in Outlook is, and this is a really big feature, the focus versus other inbox. So it tries to keep you in the loop about what's important and what's not. Now, what's in other, this is generally for spam or newsletters, things that you don't want to unsubscribe to, you still want to get them, but you want to kind of skim them every now and again. You can move things between them by right clicking and choosing in move to focus or always move to focus, that will be from the same sender. And equally in here, for example, I don't want this one to appear everywhere, so I'm going to right click and choose always move to other. And then this one and future messages will move to other. Not this other historic one. I can just drag and drop manually into other. That one I can just right click and as a one off move to other, but the others do work there in that way. And finally, let's conclude with some other features. For example, these that are in Office 365, but not in 2021. So data types in Excel is amazing. It's like an encyclopedia within your Excel. You can look up place names, movie names, music, people, etc., and get loads of information about them. I also love in PowerPoint, AI-enabled design ideas and a presentation coach. You have premium content, so you have way more stock photos, icons, illustrations, videos, etc., just to name a few. And do you see that, that that's happening there? That is the more feature that got introduced in Office 2019. Uh, also text highlighter in PowerPoint and the zoom feature, the section zoom. Then we have map charts and switch and text join in Excel. I really love those. So these are versions of map charts you can get inside Excel. Useful functions like text join and switch. I have videos on my channel of pretty much all of these things. And finally, the zoom feature in PowerPoint, which allows you to go into one section or one slide whichever one you want to choose from, which look really, really great. So if you like this video, then my name is David and I'm and I have tons of other videos on my channel. So please subscribe if you want to get more information on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. Thanks for watching.